Welcome to the complete animation of Perdita from Walt Disney Animation Studios' animated classic 101 Dalmatians. This movie is so good. Like, the pacing is on point, the animation works really well. Right now I'm listening to the biography of Don Bluth, and in there he says that he was not really impressed with this transition in animation. So if you notice, this movie has outlines of the characters that aren't as pristine as they were in earlier movies like Bambi or Snow White. And the reason why is because animation is really expensive and they just could not afford to do what they did before. What they did before was they would have an entire army of painters who would take the finished line work and basically trace over it on clear sheets of celluloid. They call those cells. And they could do a lot of interesting things with that because each cell was hand painted. The outlines could be colored. Like you could have colored outlines for the characters. And so like, if you look at Bambi, he doesn't have black outlines. He has colored outlines around the uh, around his character. But here, they started using Xerox. And that made it so that every outline for every character was the same color, just black. And so Don Bluth really didn't like that. And I don't really agree with Don Bluth. I think that there is nothing wrong with this. The, like, they had the same process happening in Robin Hood and the Jungle Book, and he didn't really like it, but I think it's fine. I think that, yes, it would be nice if all of these cells were all hand-painted and they had the option to have colored outlines, but I think that he was too hard on this. But, you know, he put his money where his mouth was, Don Bluth would later go on to make The Secret of Nim, and with The Secret of Nim, he basically poured his heart and soul into doing everything that he wanted in animation. But let's talk more about 101 Dalmatians, and particu particularly Perdita. Perdita is a really interesting character in that she is once again a shining example of strong female characters before the days of, you know, that being a trend that everybody had to go for. It's like when people think of strong female characters in Hollywood, they think of characters that are so blatantly trying to be strong female characters that uh, it just doesn't work. So like take Captain Marvel or Black Widow from the MCU, just as an example those characters why are they strong female characters is it it basically just boils down to them taking on traits of masculinity it's like oh how do we make a strong female character oh we make them fight like men we make them talk like men we make them basically into men <laughs> but they're women it's like come on now perdita on the other hand she never tries to like, they don't write her to be overly masculine. They don't write her to do anything. She is just a character. And most importantly, she is a mother. She is a mom. You look at the beginning of the movie when they just are barely settled down. And she's talking to Pongo about things. Like, Pongo is worried because she's pregnant. And, you know, there's kids. And she is not worried. She is just like, look, dogs have been having puppies long before our time. You know, it, it's happened before. I think I can do it. But then, as soon as Cruella de Vil comes up, it shatters it. And you can see it. Perdita has already prepared to give her heart to these puppies. She is ready to love them, and she hasn't even met them yet. And as soon as Cruella de Vil shows up, like, it puts the fear of God in her. She is 
scared. And then the next scene when it just shows the puppies are there and they're having, you know, a family moment watching some, you know, dumb TV show. Actually, I think the 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 uh, Wonderbolt TV show is kind of fun. It's yeah, it's fun. But yeah, she is just a good mom. But then when times get tough and her entire like all of her children get kidnapped, she stops at nothing to get them back. And she doesn't change who she is. She's still just herself but she runs to the ends of the earth like um i looked it up on google maps just like to get an idea of where they ended up going and the best i can estimate they ran like 50 miles or so outside of london to the countryside to get here that is some dedication and then later on when they're all just walking through the blizzard it's like ugh. perdita is such a good mom she is a strong female character and she does nothing to have like anything to do with the modern trend of having strong female characters that are basically just men and like the best thing i can compare her to is mrs brisby from the secret of nim both of them are mothers. Both of them are trying their hardest to do what they can for their children in, frankly, unprecedented circumstances. And I think that one of my favorite things about this entire movie is Pongo and Perdita's relationship. They are the dream team. They are a couple who are 100% devoted to each other and 100% devoted to their children. There is just something beautiful in that. Recently, I've been hearing a lot about, you know, people on Discord servers I'm on who have had, like, troubles with their parents. And all I can think is, holy cow, I am so lucky. My parents are basically as perfect as you could ever hope for. And it's something that I, I guess I've taken it for granted my entire life. But <sighs> Pongo and Perdita, they are an example of basically perfect characters. Like, yes, they have flaws. No, they're not like all powerful or anything like that. But in terms of their, their character, like who they want to be and what they're willing to do to do that. They're basically perfect. And I really like movies that have married couples be the dream team. It's like, here are these two people who clearly love each other and are willing to go to the end of the earth for for each other and with each other. And I just really like it. <laughs> I think that 101 Dalmatians might just be the strong like have the strongest narrative of classic disney like the strongest it's like you think of the other movies that they have they have you know cinderella bambi dumbo it's like those movies they like they're good but i think that in terms of just pure story and pacing this movie is the best i really like 101 dalmatians and the best part is the sequel is also good. It's it's very different, but I think that 101 Dalmatians 2 Patches London Adventure is actually one of the better ones of the Disney sequels. Disney sequels vary in quality, but that one's a good one. Thanks for watching.